Hello, this is David Harper of Bionic Turtle and a review of the cost of asset liquidation or the factors that determine the cost of liquidity risk. For FRM candidates, this is from Christopher Culp. And we can think about liquidity risk as being about time. That is to say, liquidity risk is about the time required to liquidate assets for cash. And generally, liquidity risk manifests as running out of time. We divide liquidity risk into two perspectives. One, market liquidity risk is the risk involved in liquidating or hedging a position. This is predominantly the concern of the trader, and in the extreme, he or she wants to avoid fire sale prices. On the other hand, funding liquidity risk is the risk to the company that cash balances will fall to such a low level that they will jeopardize current operations. This is predominantly the concern of the chief financial officer. So, according to Culp, we have five key factors that determine the cost of asset liquidation. And one is the market microstructure. The market microstructure is the set of rules, either explicit or implicit, that determine how assets are traded. And we can think of this in two perspectives. First, the dealership structure. This refers to who provides the immediacy in the market. On the one hand, or at one end of the spectrum, we have centralized markets where a market maker is charged with maintaining a two-sided market. The classic example is the specialist on the New York Stock Exchange. At the other end of the spectrum, we have decentralized dealership structures. Here, without a market maker, buyers and sellers come together and conduct trades. The classic example here is Chicago Merck or Chicago Board of Trade. In between those two, we may have dealers in foreign exchange and swaps who function much of the time like market makers, providing immediacy and quoting two-sided prices, but however, unlike New York Stock Exchange specialists, they are not required to maintain a continuous presence. Temporal aggregation refers to the timing of the trade decisions. At one end of the spectrum, we have the call market, where trading occurs synchronously at pre-established times. And a classic example of this is the auction of U.S. Treasury securities. These are a classic example of a call market. At the other end of the spectrum, we have the continuous markets where trading is asynchronous during long intervals of time. And the classic example of this is the trading of foreign exchange futures and securities listed and traded on organized exchange fall somewhere in between call markets and continuous markets. The next factor is the liquidation time horizon. So all other things being equal, the faster an asset must be sold, the higher its liquidation costs. And as mentioned before, in the extreme, the firm must sell the assets so quickly that it may hurt from fire sale prices. Additionally, if a firm has to sell large positions, this creates immediate supply in the market which tends to drive down prices. Next is asset type, and this refers to whether the asset is simple or complex. If the asset is simple, it is easy to value, and a good example of this is a short-term U.S. Treasury. It's e all of the things being equal, easier to liquidate because it's easy to price. At the other end of the spectrum, we have structured finance vehicles and asset-backed securities, like partially funded synthetic CDOs, that are more complex and harder to value. And the final factor is what Culp calls asset fungibility. And asset fungibility refers to whether the asset can be easily offset or whether it must be unwound with the counterparty. And the classic example of an asset that is easy to offset is a futures contract on a commodities exchange. There's a central clearinghouse, and it's easy to close out this position. 
at the, at the other end of the spectrum might be an over-the-counter bilateral contract such as a credit default swap where there is no centralized exchange and that asset must be unwound with the specific counterparty and as Culp noted, notes on occasion if the counterparty knows there it is there are no easy offsets this can give the counterparty bargaining leverage which increases the cost of liquidation and so we've covered the factors by Culp and we can summarize them as market microstructure which refers to either dealership structure or temporal aggregation liquidation time horizon asset type and asset fungibility this is david harper of the monarch turtle thanks for your time